Hello everyone and welcome back to the next lecture of control systems. From this presentation, we are going to start a new chapter which is modeling of physical systems. In the previous chapter, block diagrams and signal flow graphs, we have discussed that how we can calculate the transfer function by using the block diagram representation or how we can apply the Mason's gain rule into a signal flow graph. Let me tell you that block diagram representation and signal flow graph representation are the models of a control system. They are the methods by which we can convert a control system into a suitable model so that we can analyze them properly. And in this chapter, we are going to do the same. We will model the physical systems. And the physical systems can be divided into two different categories. The first one is the electrical networks and the second one is the mechanical systems. So we will discuss that how we can convert the electrical networks and the mechanical systems into their equivalent models. That is how we can convert those physical systems into their equivalent block diagrams and their equivalent signal flow graphs. So what we will do, we will divide this chapter into two parts. The first part will be the modeling of electrical networks and the second part will be the modeling of mechanical systems. And in this lecture, we will start with the modeling of electrical networks. So let's get started. So let us start with the modeling of electrical systems. In this section, we will discuss various electrical networks and we will try to analyze them by converting them into their equivalent signal flow graphs. So let's start with a basic example. Find the transfer function of the network shown below. One electrical network is given to us and we can see that this is a simple RC low pass filter. We have discussed this network in chapter 1. And we know that we can easily calculate the overall transfer function of this electrical network by using the voltage divider rule. That is what we have discussed in chapter 1. But in this lecture, we will also discuss that how we can model this network. That is, how we can convert this network into its equivalent signal flow graph. And then we will apply the Mason's gain rule to find out the overall transfer function. But firstly, we will calculate the overall transfer function by using the voltage divider rule that we have already discussed. So moving on to the solution, we know that if we want to calculate the overall transfer function of this electrical network, firstly, we have to convert this circuit into its Laplace equivalent. And we know that the Laplace equivalent of Vi of t, which is the input voltage, is Vi of s. The Laplace equivalent of V out of t, which is the output voltage, which is calculated across the capacitor, is V out of s. The impedance of resistance R is R. And the impedance of capacitor C is 1 over Sc. We have derived all these in the chapter number 1. So if we convert this network into its Laplace equivalent, then the network will look like this. Now we can see that this resistor and this capacitor are connected in series because the current across both the elements will be the same. No current will move towards this open circuited branch. And hence we can apply the voltage divider rule in order to calculate the output voltage across this capacitor. So we have V out of S equal to VI of S, which is the total input voltage, multiplied with 1 over SC, which is the impedance of capacitor, divided by the total impedance R plus 1 over SC. Now, if we transpose this factor VI of S to the left hand side, we will have V out of S over VI of S equal to 1 over SC, divided by R plus 1 over SC. Now, if we take the LCM in the denominator, we will have V out of S over VI of S equal to 1 over RSC plus 1. And this is the overall transfer function of this RC low pass filter. We have already discussed this method in chapter number 1. This was just for your revision that how we used to calculate the overall transfer function by using the voltage divider rule. But now we will convert this circuit into its equivalent signal flow graph and then we will try to apply the Mason's gain rule. So we will now discuss that how we can draw a signal flow graph for an electrical network. We have to follow four different steps in order to draw a signal flow graph from an electrical network. The first one is to convert the network in S domain. We have to convert the network in its Laplace domain. The second step is to write the equations for branch currents and node voltages. 
We have to apply the KVL and KCL equations so that we can write the branch currents and node voltages. In the third step, we have to draw the signal flow graph by using these equations. So as we write the branch currents and node voltages, we will have certain linear equations and we will use them to draw the signal flow graph. And in the fourth step, as we have the signal flow graph now, we will apply the Mason's gain formula in order to calculate the overall transfer function of that electrical network. So I hope you got this. We will now take the same example of this RC low pass filter and we will convert this into its equivalent signal flow graph and then we will find out the overall transfer function. So the step number one is to convert the network in S domain. So if we convert this network into its equivalent Laplace domain, then the network will look like this. The input voltage is VI of S. The impedance of resistor is R. The impedance of capacitor is 1 over SC. The output voltage, which is measured across the capacitor, is V out of S. And hence, the voltage at this node is also V out of S. Now let us assume that the current in this loop is Is. We know that this resistor and this capacitor are present in series and hence the current across both the elements will be same. Now we will move on to step number 2 in which we have to write the equations for branch currents and node voltages. In this circuit, we have only one current which is Is. And we know that this is the same current which is traveling across this resistor. So if we want to write the equation for Is, we can apply the Ohm's law for this resistor. The voltage at this node of resistor R is VI of S and the voltage at this terminal is V out of S. So the value of Is will be the difference of these voltages over R. Is equal to VI of S minus V naught of S over R. Now, if we split this term, we will have I of S equal to VI of S over R minus V naught of S over R. And this is the equation for branch current. Now we will move on to the calculation of this node voltage V out of S. And we know that V out of S is the voltage drop across this capacitor. And this capacitor is having the impedance 1 over SC. And the current across this capacitor is I of S. So we can write V out of S equal to I of S multiplied with 1 over SC. According to the Ohm's law, the voltage drop across an element is the product of current moving through that element multiplied with the impedance of that element. And in this way, we have V out of S equal to Is multiplied with 1 over Sc. And this is the node voltage equation. So we have the linear equations of branch currents and node voltages. We will now move on to draw the signal flow graph by using these equations. So let us now move on to the drawing of signal flow graph from the equations that we have calculated. The branch current equation Is equal to Vis over R minus V naught S over R and the node voltage equation V out S equal to Is multiplied with 1 over Sc. Now we know that a signal flow graph consists of nodes and branches. Nodes represent the variables and the branches represent the relations between two nodes. In the electrical networks, the variables are the voltages and currents. Can you guess why? Yes, if we increase the voltage, the values of current will also increase. And that's why the voltages and currents are the variables in the electrical networks. So, the nodes which represent the variables in a signal flow graph consist of voltages and currents. In this particular network that we are given in this example, we have three different variables, the input voltage Vis, the output voltage V0S and the branch current Is. So we will have three different nodes. The first one will be the input voltage Vis, the second one will be the output voltage Vis and the third one will be the branch current Is. In this way, we are done with the identification of nodes. We will now use these algebraic equations in order to draw the signal flow graph. So, if we want to relate this node Is with these two nodes, we can use this equation. We know Is equal to Vis over R minus V out S over R. So, we have Is equal to Vis multiplied with 1 over R minus of V out S multiplied with 1 over R. Check this out, we have 
आई एस इक्वल टू वी आई एस मल्टीप्लाइड विथ वन ओवर आर प्लस वी आउट एस मल्टीप्लाइड विथ माइनस वन ओवर आर इन दिस वे वी हैव सेटिस्फाइड दिस इक्वेजन वी विल नाउ मूव ऑन टू दिस सेकेंड इक्वेजन विच इज वी आउट एस इक्वल टू आई एस मल्टीप्लाइड विथ वन ओवर एस सी वी कैन सी दैट दिस इक्वेजन रिलेट्स दिस नोड वी आउट एस with this node i of s and we can see that v out s is equal to i of s multiplied with 1 over sc and this is the complete signal flow graph representation of the rc low pass filter which is given in the example and we have drawn this by the use of these two equations let us check this one more time i s equal to v i s multiplied with 1 over r plus v out s multiplied with minus 1 over r in this way This first equation is satisfied. Now, V out s is equal to I s multiplied with one over S c, and in this way, this second equation is also satisfied. Now, we will apply the Mason's gain rule in this signal flow graph in order to calculate the overall transfer function. So, firstly, we have to calculate the forward path gain, which is the product of these two branches. So, we will have the forward path gain equal to one over R. multiplied with 1 over sc which is equal to 1 over rsc now we will calculate the loop gain we have one loop present in this signal flow graph and the loop gain will be the product of these two branches it will be equal to 1 over sc multiplied with minus 1 over r which will be minus 1 over rsc now we will move on to the calculation of determinant of signal flow graph which will be delta equal to 1 minus of gains of all individual loops and so on in this signal flow graph we have only one loop having gain minus 1 over rsc so we have delta equal to 1 minus of minus 1 over rsc and if we open this bracket we will have delta equal to 1 plus 1 over rsc Now lastly we will move on to the calculation of associated path factor and we know that if we want to calculate the associated path factor with respect to a particular forward path we have to erase that forward path and if we erase this forward path the number of isolated loops will be equal to 0 so the associated path factor del1 is equal to 1 let us now apply the mason's gain formula in order to calculate the overall transfer function so we have V out s over V i s equal to P one multiplied with del one over delta. Now, if we put all these values that we have calculated in this equation, we will have V out s over V i s equal to one over R s c multiplied with one over one plus one over R s c. The forward path gain P one is equal to one over R s c. The associated path factor del one is equal to one. and the determinant of sfg delta is equal to 1 plus 1 over rsc now if we take the lcm in the denominator and solve this we will have v out s over v i s equal to 1 over rsc plus 1 and this is the overall transfer function for this signal flow graph and we have calculated this by the use of mason's gain rule In this way we converted an electrical network into its equivalent signal flow graph by using the branch current equation and the node voltage equation and then we applied the mason's gain rule in order to find out the overall transfer function now you must be wondering that why we calculated the overall transfer function by using the signal flow graph if we were able to calculate the overall transfer function simply by applying the voltage divider rule in a single step Yes in this case we can say that the voltage divider rule is very simple as we can calculate the overall transfer function in one single step but for complex circuits it is very difficult to apply the voltage divider rule and in that case the signal flow graph method is very useful for us so i want you all to go through this lecture one more time and observe these steps carefully we will discuss some more examples based on modeling of electrical network in the upcoming lectures As of now we are done with this lecture thank you for watching this lecture i'll end this one here see you in the next lecture